An oscilloscope is an instrument that is used to measure voltage versus time, and whereas your multimeter can measure voltage, you know, single points in time, or it can give you a sampling of that, the oscilloscope can follow the waveform in time. So that's really useful with time varying signals, like sinusoidal signals, or in this case right here, I have a microphone that's connected to an amplifier. It would be very hard to quantify the signal coming out of the microphone or how the amplifier amplifies it with a voltmeter. So I could use an oscilloscope. And oftentimes, you'd connect the oscilloscope to the input of your amplifier and the output. And with those two channels, you can look at the stimulus and the response to that. So it's a good diagnostic tool for building circuits or if you're actually exploring to see what signals look like, you could use it as an indicator or display of voltage versus time. So how do we do that? So the uh, before we do that, we'll just look at the schematic really quickly of the circuit. So I have a microphone over here that has a DC blocking capacitor. It's connected to the non-inverting input of an amplifier, an op amp. And this one has a gain of 11. And then the output appears here. So whatever voltage appears on the input, it should be 11 times larger on the output. So if I want to test the circuit out, a good thing to do would be to put a signal at the input and measure the signal at the output and make sure that, you know, indeed it's 11 times larger. Make sure it's not distorted or clipped or saturated in any kind of way. And I can use the scope to do that. So the oscilloscope we're going to use is called the PicoScope. And it looks like this. There are a few different versions of it. So this box right here is connected to the USB port on your computer. You know, make sure you have the right connectors. The cable it comes with is a USB-A. So it's kind of old school. And then it comes with these two probes and the probes are used to connect to your circuit. So a quick look at a probe. So the uh, this part of the probe right here is the, the signal input. Notice when I push down on this gray thing right there, it exposes that metal hook. You can use that metal hook to connect to wires. Like I could connect it to a wire if I wanted to you know, measure the signal on that wire. Or the uh, other thing you could do is you could pull off the, the hat and you could use this as a probe. So I could probe something like if I wanted to measure the voltage on my thing, fingertip. I could probe my fingertip with that. So note the silver band around here is the ground. So the gold tip is the signal input and the silver band is the ground. We know we're measuring voltage, so we need the reference and then the actual signal measurement. We need two terminals and they're right there. So the other place you can connect to ground is over here. You'll notice there's a little black lead that's hanging on there. They do come off, so you can either pop them off, or if they are popped off, you could put it back on. And conveniently, you can alligator clip this to your ground signal, or your ground on your circuit board, and then you could move around with the probe. Or if you want it to go hands-free, you know, you'd push the hat back on. This is in slang actually called a witch's hat. And then you, know, you could measure voltage, like I could connect say my ground to my circuit, and then my my probe tip there. Now I'm measuring the voltage across this wire, which you know in theory should be zero in this class because I'm discounting electromagnetics. So the other end of the probe is this part right here. This is called a BNC connector. Signal is the inner pin, ground is the outer pin. And that could connect to either of the two inputs on the picoscope. There's a channel A input, notice the arrow pointing in, channel B input. So I might want to connect to channel A you know, gently push it in, turn it, and it locks in, and now that's all set. So one other thing about oscilloscope probes, a lot of them have a, an attenuation selector on there. And the 1x means that it basically is connecting this tip here, like there's no change in the signal. If you put it on 10x, it's like putting a voltage divider that'll divide the voltage on the input by a factor of 10 at the output right here. And you could do that if you're measuring signals with really large voltages. For this class, just be sure it's set on one and everything should be fine. So as I said, we came, you know, our kit came with two probes, so we could connect to the channel A and B, and then if we want to measure our circuit, we get our circuit over here. This is our microphone circuit. Put it down on the bench. And a lot of times, the first thing I do is I connect the ground. And so I'm going to get my, my channel A probe over here. And there's no real good place to connect the ground on the circuit. And I don't want to get too close to the parts just in case I short it out. So I made use of this resistor right here. I plugged both of the legs into the ground bus on the circuit board. So the, you know, that bus right there is connected to ground. And I'm literally using it as a connection point. So I'm not using it for its resistance value. I'm just using it for those metal wires right there. And then I want to measure 
So the input going into the amplifier, which just happens to be at the end of this blue wire, so I could connect my probe to the resistor right there, which is connected to the input. So that is my channel A connection. Then I mentioned before that a lot of times you want to measure you know, input versus output. So I get my other probe. I'm going to grab onto the resistor leg there, so I have my other ground grounded. And then the output of my amplifier is this 100K resistor right here. And so I, everything is all connected up now. We'll just review what we did. So on the right-hand side, we have our channel A lead. It's connected to the input of our amplifier with the hook. We connected it to this, this uh, resistor right here, and that's connected to our amplifier with this blue wire. So our ground is connected back to the leg of that resistor. And remember, we're just really using that resistor as a ground point, so it's not really doing any resisting at all. On the left-hand side, we have our probe connected to our feedback resistor, which is connected to pin one of the op amp. That's the output of the op amp. And that goes to the channel B on the oscilloscope, once again connected to ground. So you can see this one is set on the 1x, and the other probe is also set on the 1x. Now that we have the probes connected properly, we can turn our attention to the PicoScope software, the app. And it looks like this right here. So this main window is the oscilloscope screen. So our horizontal axis is time and our vertical axis is volts in here. And this is the default setting. You, know, you turn the thing on, you plug it in and get everything running. And the, uh, the voltage scale is set to auto, meaning that it auto scales to whatever it measures and it gives you a good resolution on the screen. So recall that we had both channels A and B connected. Channel A was our input, B was our output. So I could enable the channel B by turning that to auto. And the channel B scale reads from the right hand side so the you know the red numbers are the b and the blue numbers are the a so it's important to make sure if your scales aren't the same that you're reading off the proper side there to get the measurements and this right here is telling me important thing about my amplifier it says that my input signal is around 2.3 volts and my output signal is around 1.8 volts right there and i know that that's within the design spec of my amplifier that's a good thing and so quickly, I could look at how, you know, I could do a measurement of the AC response to this. So there's another video that goes a lot more in depth about how to use the Pico scope. But right now, I could change my time scale to something that's a little bit more reasonable for what I'm trying to measure. And notice as I do that, you can see the red signal is changing a bit. Like there is a uh, little bit of a waveform appearing there as I speak. And that's because this is a microphone and it's actually picking up my voice. We don't see it the blue signal because that's the input, which is much smaller, right? So our, our output is the red one that's amplified. So we're going to change these two connections, what they call AC coupled right here. And when I do that, I auto scale and the signal looks bigger. It's actually not, just the scales changed. So going from DC to AC blocks the DC coming into the picoscope. So you're just measuring the AC, which is a time varying waveform. And oftentimes the, the auto range doesn't really range where you want it to. So I could set it up, I could manually fix those ranges, and maybe I'd set this one to 200. Then the output I'm expecting to be about 10 times larger than the input. So if I set this one to 200 and this one to 2, that's a 10 times increase. And notice that the signals are kind of following each other. And I could snap my fingers. And if I could snap and hit the stop at the same time, you'd see the waveforms on the screen. So the other thing I can do is I can set what they call a trigger right here. If I set that on repeat, whenever the voltage on channel A crosses this threshold, it'll redraw the screen. So right now it's quiet, it's not doing that. But if I snap, hit the stop right there so it doesn't run, you'll notice we have the two signals following each other. So blue channel is our input, red channel is our output, and it's showing that the red channel is slightly larger than the blue channel, which is what we expect because we have a gain of 11, right? And if you look at my choice of scales over here, you know, the channel B scale is 10 times larger than the channel A scale. So it makes sense that if channel B, the output, is actually 11 times larger, you know, it'll be slightly bigger than the A channel. And you could see that, you know, as I zoomed in over here a little bit closer. 
So this right here is telling me that my amplifier is working properly. So kind of cool, you know, the uh, you know, the output is about 11 times larger than the input as the theory predicted.